Hello everyone. Today we are delving into the world of prostaglandins. We will study about the pharmacology of prostaglandins. It might sound complicated, but don't worry. We'll make it easy to understand. Okay, let's talk about two special things in our body: prostaglandins and leukotrienes. These are like tiny helpers made from special fats with 20 carbon atoms. Now in our body prostaglandins thromboxins and leukotrienes all come from something called eicosa eicosa is the fatty acids with 20 carbon atoms we group them together and call them eicosanoids the most important fatty acid that comes out from our cell walls is named as arachidonic acid it is 5811114 eicosa tetraenoic acid These eicosanoids are like little messengers that are everywhere in our body. Almost every cell and tissue can create at least one type of prostaglandins or leukotrienes. Now here's the interesting part. Prostaglandins and leukotrienes are not stored beforehand. Instead, our body make them right on the spot when it needs them. The speed of making them depends on how quickly the arachidonic acid is released from the cell walls especially when our body sends signals like during the inflammation immune responses and the cell signaling so in simple words these eicosanoids are like quick helpers made exactly where and when our body needs them all right let's dive into the awesome process of how our body creates the prostaglandins So I'll keep it simple and fun. So hang in there. The first call for action comes from the chemical and the physical signals. Now meet our first superhero enzyme that is phospholipase A2, or you can also call it as cytosolic phospholipase A2. Its job is to respond to the signals and release the arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is the main character in our story. it is held captive in the cell membranes phospholipase a2 being the superhero it breaks the chain or to be precise it breaks the ester bonds of the membrane phospholipids especially the phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine and it releases the arachidonic acid from the cell membrane now arachidonic acid is free to act Electronic acid gets on the stage and here comes the next set of superhero enzymes the cox enzyme that is the cyclooxygenase enzyme it creates the eicosanoids with ring structure prostaglandins thromboxins and prostacyclins these are the ring structures and if lipooxygenase enzyme acts on the arachidonic acid it creates the compounds with a open chain Okay, now Cox enzymes. Cox one is like everyday superhero, found everywhere in our body, doing the task like protecting the stomach lining, regulating the kidney blood flow, and helping the platelets do their things. On the other hand, we have Cox two enzymes. The Cox two enzyme superhero that shows up when there's a trouble, like inflammation and pain. So when the Cox enzyme start their magic they create eicosanoids it's like a superhero teamwork forming the prostaglandins prostacyclins and other cool structures with the rings and if the another enzyme that is the Lox enzyme joins in it creates a different kind of compounds with the open chain ones so in short Cox 1 is a everyday super superhero managing the regular task while Cox 2 is a superhero dealing with the issues like inflammation and pain So our messengers the prostaglandins are born from a teamwork. Isn't it easy to understand? Okay now let's continue. After the Cox enzymes work their magic on the arachidonic acid they create something called prostaglandin G2. So prostaglandin G2 is a unstable cyclic endoperoxide and prostaglandin G2 then transforms into its stable form that is prostaglandin H2 but the story doesn't end here now enters the isomerase enzymes the isomerase enzymes convert pgh2 into pge2 pgd2 and pgf2 alpha 
let's break down their roles prostaglandin e2 has a role in inflammation pain and fever regulation and prostaglandin f2 alpha has a role in uterine contraction during the childbirth now another enzyme thromboxin synthase jumps into action it creates thromboxin a2 and thromboxin b2 thromboxin a2 becomes the superhero of platelet aggregation thromboxin a2 is involved in platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction that is it clots our blood when needed and also vasoconstrict or tighten up the blood vessels on the other side prostacyclin synthase comes into play creating the prostacyclin a prostaglandin i2 that is also called prostacyclin or 6 keto prostaglandin f1 alpha pgi2 has vasodilatory property and inhibits the platelet aggregation it has vasodilatory powers and brings the balance by inhibiting the platelet aggregation so these are the uh, different compounds created by the cox enzyme now we have studied all this how arachidonic acid is released from the cell membrane what happens when cyclooxygenase enzyme acts on it and what prostaglandins are formed now let's move into the another pathway where arachidonic acid takes a different road guided by the lipooxygenase enzyme and creates a unique set of compounds with the open chain structures when the lox steps onto the scene it does not create the cyclic endoperoxides like cox instead it transforms the arachidonic acid into the open chain compounds leukotrienes play a crucial role in immune system especially during the allergic reactions and inflammations lox also creates another superheroes called hydroxy eicosa tetraenoic acid h e t e for short this hydroxy eicosa tetraenoic acid have various roles in being been involved in the uh, inflammation and blood vessels regulation if lox work on the arachidonic acid it gives us leukotrienes they can be named leukotrien a4 b4 c4 t4 and e4 as for the hete they come into different form too like 5 hete and 12 hete these numbers indicate where the action is happening in the structure and each plays a specific role in our, in our body we'll study the lipooxygenase or leukotrienes in the different chapter here we will continue the cox products so now we will study about the prostaglandin receptors how these prostaglandins work in our body where they work so they talk to different parts of our body using the special doorways called the receptors these are called the prostanoid receptors think of these like locks that only prostaglandins can open these prostanoid receptors these are like the meeting points where the prostaglandins talk to our cells and influence inflammation childbirth blood flow platelet behavior so it's a sophisticated communication network in our body each receptor play a specific role in signaling now all these prostanoid receptors are g protein coupled receptors so prostaglandins exert their effect by binding to the specific g protein coupled receptors on the cell membranes these receptors can be classified into subtypes based on their specificity for different prostanoids like prostaglandin e receptor thromboxane receptor prostacyclin receptors so these are the subtypes of the receptor now we will study about the signaling pathway let's talk about the prostaglandin receptors now we'll study here in detail a lot of it is written here but we will talk about some very important points only and we'll try to keep it easy to understand so first of all we will start with the prostaglandin e receptor ep1 ep2 ep3 and ep4 receptors so ep1 receptor imagine them as a muscle manager they team up with the gq protein leading to the phospholipase c activation activation of ip3 
and releases the calcium and causes the smooth muscles contraction their main function is to contract okay now on the other hand ep2 and ep4 receptors these are the cool ones they couple with the gs protein and act their activation cause the activation of adenyl cyclase and increases the cyclic amp so ep2 and ep4 receptor says take it easy and contributes to a more relaxed state in the body they causes the blood vessels relaxation and allow for the smooth blood flow main function ep3 couples to the gi protein leading to inhibition of cy adenyl cyclase and inhibition of phospholipase activation they inhibits the cyclic p formation their action is inhibitory ep3 receptors uh, they can be contractory they can be relaxation they call they can cause both so ep3 receptors being the multitasker can be found in various tissues with different functions adapting to the body's need next is the prostaglandin d receptors coming back to the prostaglandin uh, this e this ep receptor when they receive their signals a series of commands goes to the body like contract here relax here so uh, it's a crucial role in regulating the muscle action and the blood flow contributing to contributing to overall balance and harmony in our system next continue uh, we will continue to the journey with the prostaglandin d receptors dp1 and dp2 receptors dp1 receptors these are the mediator of relaxation and dilation like ep2 and ep4 so dp1 also couples to the gs protein like ep2 and ep4 receptor dp1 also couples to the gs protein and causes the smooth muscle relaxation whereas dp2 receptor is a uh, dp2 receptor couples to gi protein and its role is more complex dp2 is involved in the inflammation and allergic responses it's like a superhero that shows up when the body needs to defend itself so in terms of location dp1 receptors are of often found in the blood vessels and other tissues where dilation is needed and dp2 receptors being the defenders these are present in the immune cells and the tissues involved in the allergic reactions so when dp1 receives its signal it's like a gentle command for relaxation ensuring the blood vessels stay open and relaxed meanwhile dp2 receptor with the gi protein partner is more of a superhero responding to the signals of inflammation and allergic challenges next is the prostaglandin f receptor these ft receptors are the muscle contractor it couples with the gq protein signaling the muscle contraction fp receptors are involved in the various functions including the uterine contraction during the childbirth and maintenance of the blood flow in terms of location fp receptors are often found in the smooth muscles tissues particularly in the uterus when activated they send the signal for the muscles to contract playing a significant role in the process of childbirth so this was about the ep receptors d receptors and f receptors now let's talk about the thromboxane receptors and prostacyclin receptors so the tp receptor thromboxane receptors they come in two subtypes tp alpha and tp beta both couple to the gq protein tp receptors are like the traffic controllers on the platelets telling them to stick together and form a clot these receptors are found in the smooth muscles tissues adding a layer of control to the blood vessel contraction their action plays a key role in blood clotting and the blood vessels regulation so they cause the contraction of the blood vessels and platelet aggregation on the other side prostacyclin receptors these are also called the ip receptors they are the game changer ip receptor couples with the gs proteins and deliver a message of relaxation when they are activated it signals the smooth muscles relaxation and inhibits the platelet aggregation so in terms of location these tp receptors are commonly found on the platelets and the smooth muscle tissues 
and they are the regulators ensuring that when a blood vessel is injured platelets gather to form a clot on the other hand these ip receptors are present in the blood vessels acting as a calm influencer promoting the relaxation and discouraging the platelets from sticking to each other so now we have studied about all the receptors so ip prostacyclin receptor ep2 ep4 receptor and dp1 receptors they couple to the gs protein and these they causes the relaxation whereas ep1 receptor fp and the tp receptors they couple to the gq protein and they causes the contraction of the smooth muscles ep3 receptor and the dp2 receptor they couple to the gi protein so i hope it was easy to understand let's move on then so in the next video we will continue the topic actions and pathophysiological roles of prostaglandins so thank you for joining today's exploration thanks a lot for your time and attention guys to stay tuned and not miss out our next video make sure to subscribe to our channel by subscribing you will receive the notification when the next video drops continuing our journey into the intricate pathways of prostaglandins so hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this fascinating journey together until next time stay curious and stay connected